My name is Jack Willard, and this is the Daily Pop-Off for Tuesday, the 5th of November, 2024. Finally, it's Election Day in the United States of America. We have been waiting for this for a long time. Anxiety has been through the roof, especially for conservatives and also for progressives as well. As you know, I don't really think there's a Democratic Party anymore. We may have some Democrats left, people that call themselves Democrats. But it's the progressives versus the Republicans from now on. And of course, the progressives want to wipe out the Republicans. So we call this, the subtitle is Finally It's Election Day. And also future Bob Joy shows that we're planning to do. Email has been strong. Um, ideas uh, abound. There's always something new when you cover the pastor who preaches in Benton, Arkansas. So we'll give you a little sneak peek about what we're planning for the future. But um, everything is trumped, so to speak, by the fact that it is Election Day. I voted um, about eight days ago. I was one of the early voters Karen and I got on a line of about 75 people at the senior center. Took us about 45 minutes to an hour to get through it. We weren't going anywhere. We wanted to vote. And every day we have driven past the uh, senior center through Sunday. Uh, There was a line outside the door wrapping around people waiting to cast their ballot. Sean Hannity said tonight on Fox, he said uh, he's thrilled about the um, record early voting turnout and the high numbers for Republicans turning out to vote. He just hopes it doesn't cannibalize the uh, vote today on Election Day. So if... um, you are a registered voter, whether you be registered Republican, Democrat, Independent, and you have not voted, please uh, make sure you get to the polls today. Make your vote count. Now, us on the conservative side would uh, really like to see President Donald Trump win both the uh, Electoral College and the popular vote. That would be a decisive win. Because not only is it felt that we need it too big to rig, but we also need to make a statement that this is the will of the majority of the American people, and don't try to mess with it. Don't try to say, oh, he can't assume the office. See, everything they say about President Trump, oh, if he gets in, uh, he'll never leave. Well, that's not true. There'll be another election in four years. He left last time. He'll leave this time. He doesn't want to do this to his last breath. Running for the office almost caused his last breath, you know. So, uh Everything they say, oh, uh, Republicans want to end democracy. Really, it's them that want to end it. They want to take away free speech. They want to take away your choices of what kind of car to drive. They want to slam the New Green Deal into your face and say you will accept this, the economic results of all this spending that they want to do will further bankrupt America. We are already $35 trillion in debt. When President 
Clinton was in office, he left with zero debt. Zero debt. Can't blame it all on COVID. It's excessive spending. And if Kamala does have plans, it's to spend, spend, spend. All my life I heard the tax and spend Democrats, and she is the personification of that. Um, Of course, we don't know what she's going to really do once she gets in. Right now, any group that she's weak with, she has promised them the moon. Oh, uh, people, young couples can't uh, afford to buy a home. Well, we'll have a credit. We'll give them $25,000 if they're interested in buying a a new home. And, of course, um, all kinds of money for extreme groups. Um, And she talks about reparations, not for the people that were actually slaves, of course, but for um, a couple of generations down the road that never experienced that. We have come a long way in America, and people like Denzel Washington will tell you that it is possible to uh, live the American dream to become wealthy if you have a passion to do it, if you have a passion to do it. The idea that the uh, conservatives, the Republicans, are all a bunch of racists. Once again, as I have said, When you hear someone say racist, 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 that's the real racist. That's not who we are in America. We're growing. Things are not like they were in Selma, Alabama in 1964. But wait, yeah, it is coming back. They're right in a way. It's coming back with Generation Z standing in front of universities saying, from the river to the sea. Kill the Jews. Kill the Jews. Can you believe that we heard that in 2023 and 2024? Can you believe that? Jewish students being uh, afraid to go to uh, school, being afraid uh, to walk the halls of the university if they can even get in, and the university... uh, kowtowing to uh, hate speech. There's the hate speech. It's not coming from Republicans. Republicans believe in the Constitution. They believe in uh, the right to free speech. Kamala Harris said in 2019, we're going to have to uh, regulate free speech on the major platforms like Facebook, Meta, uh, Twitter, which is now X, they'll especially want to uh, control things there if they get in because they hate Elon Musk, who has, uh, of course, come out for Trump in a big way and will probably play a role in the administration. Joe Rogan, the number one podcaster in America, late Monday night endorsed President Donald Trump to be the 47th president of the United States. That's a big win right there. Um, When Donald Trump went on for three hours, could you imagine Kamala doing that? She didn't want any part of going on Joe Rogan. She doesn't want real questions. She knows she's not going to just ignore what he's saying. Did I tell you I was from a uh, middle-class upbringing, Joe? I asked you a question. No, 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 no. I asked you a question, Madam Vice President. We need to get beyond the usual talking points. And, of course, she is uh, afraid of that. The thought of doing three hours with Joe Rogan, uh, that's not in her wheelhouse. That's not in her wheelhouse. But President Trump went on there and got over 24 million views, probably more by now, over 24 million So there's been such a buzz. There's been such a buzz for the last few weeks. Um, President Trump's rallies bringing in 
a huge amount of people. She doesn't have to uh, uh, corral celebrities. He doesn't have to corral celebrities to come to his rally so people will show up. People will show up. Could you imagine Kamala getting a full house at Madison Square Garden? No celebrities, just Kamala uh, and um, a few of the uh, top Democrats, if you want to call them that, progressives. Uh, No big name stars or anything like that. But having Madison Square Garden filled to the rafters, and then thousands of people out on the street trying to watch on big screen TVs or or what have you. She couldn't do that. There is something uh, really going on in America, and we hope it translates to actual votes, actual votes uh, uh, today. It's going to take a long time. People say, oh, we're going to have the uh, coverage here on the Internet and stuff like that. Well, Arizona, for example, has already let us know. They've already let us know that they are way behind in counting the early voting. So uh, it'll take a good while to uh, get results from Arizona. They are notorious for this. And um, you have to keep an eye on Arizona. Um, Michigan, same thing. Uh Several attorney generals, young females for the most part, that are definitely not for Donald Trump, have already been caught um, trying to enact uh, things that would uh, cause problems, that would cause problems. The Supreme Court has had to act on some of these attempts to uh, not worry about whether or not the person voting was a citizen of the United States. One AG that was caught with her hand in the cookie jar twice was asked if she was uh, going to resign from her position. And she said, no, I have no intention of doing that. They'd have to throw her out, you know. So these are the kind of things that are going on. Pennsylvania, all eyes are on Pennsylvania, very important state. Uh, President Trump has been ahead of that. They have what they call the shy vote for President uh, Trump. People don't want to say that they uh, are going to vote for Trump, but when they get into the uh, voting booth, they do, they do, they will, they will. So um, that could be significant. That could be significant. All the uh, trends and the numbers at this point, as I talked to you in the early morning hours of November 5th, show that there's a big movement towards Trump. But uh, it's tight. It's tight in the general polling. Some polling, it's not so close. Don't believe the polls. Don't say, oh, they don't need my vote. Get out there and... uh, and vote today. Brian Williams will return to the anchor chair for the first time since he left uh, MSNBC in 2021. I have a feeling he realized that the network was going into the uh, cesspool, and even though he doesn't like Trump, uh, he was not happy with what he was seeing, and it's gotten much worse. NBC in general has gotten much worse uh, since the days when he was uh, anchoring the NBC nightly news, certainly, and then the uh, 11th hour and the breaking news anchor on MSNBC. Uh, So he hasn't done um, anything that we know of since uh, 2021, but uh, on Prime Video, Tonight, as I speak to you, starting at 6 p.m., he will return to the anchor chair and uh, he will stay with it until there's a result, meaning that they could, you know, have to come back for a few days because this this is what happens these days. You know, with all the new technology, 
which you have to be skeptical of, you have to keep your eye on with all the new technology, it takes longer than the paper ballots ever took. Because this time around, you're filling out a paper ballot and then you're feeding it into a machine. You're feeding it into a machine. Uh, so one would hope that it wouldn't take so long. And uh, I know that uh, Lara Trump, for example, uh, has been um, fronting an organization to keep the vote honest, to not let any shenanigans go on. Um, it's a big job. It's a huge task. There are these attorney generals that try to push Trump off the ballot early, such as in Maine. And that went to the Supreme Court, and that was overturned. Of course, uh, one of the things Kamala Harris wants to do is she wants to pack the court. She wants to pack the court and because they don't like losing. They can't take losing. So if they lose this election, um, <laughs> they're not going to take it lying down. They say it's President Trump that uh, will try to hold on to power if he gets in and not want to leave in four years and uh, that, uh, you know, he's going to uh, he's going to work on his enemies list is the number one thing. None of that is true. None of that is true. Although he's been persecuted since he first rode down the escalator at Trump Tower in 2015 and all these indictments in 2023. Ridiculous indictments. So, um, but when, when he was asked by a voter if, uh, you know, if, if he gets into office again, is uh, revenge going to be the number one thing on his mind? And he said, no, I'm going to be too busy building back America making America great again. He did it once. He can do it again. He'll have a wonderful team with him. J.D. Vance has really come up to speed. He does wonderful interviews, whereas Tim Walls just seems, seems like a total bumpkin. The governor who let his city burn as the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, people were out there burning down part of Minnesota and other parts of the state. He did nothing about it. He didn't call in the National Guard to waylate. So, uh, and they seem to, uh, as Kamala said, well, this was justifiable. It was justifiable to burn down police stations and black-owned businesses in big cities, chase businesses out of the city, terrorize senior citizens, kill people. That, Kamala Harris says, was justifiable, and they're, they're not going to stop, she said. They're not going to stop. We've never had a vice president that said those kind of things, you know. Um, and, of course, what the BLM founders did was just take the money and buy big houses and ha, 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 ha. And then she sought to get uh, reparations for them, for the BLM rioters, just like she wants to... Uh, to have reparations for uh, people who maybe their grandparents or great-grandparents were slaves, uh, but not them. They're playing on a level playing field for the most part. We've made tremendous strides. Bill Maher will say that. We've made tremendous progress, and um, there are uh, many black celebrities, black politicians that will tell you that yes, you can see your dreams come true. You've just got to have a passion. You've got to go out there and work for it, no matter what skin color you are. Um, looking for a payday that you didn't earn. Hey, we all love those uh, stimulus checks when we were in the middle of COVID, but now we have moved on from that. We have moved on. So Kamala, to get crowds, has had everyone from Lady Gaga to John Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen. This is how she gets crowds at her rallies, but they still can't equal what Trump gets. 
you know, uh, Beyonce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, trying everything she can, uh, backing down from every issue that she uh, promoted before. Oh, I am for fracking now. I want to win Pennsylvania, so I got to say that. I am for fracking now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what kind of car you, you, you have to drive. Well, she said that by 2045, all vehicles would be electric. You wouldn't be able to buy one. And then they're going after your gas stove and all this stuff. It's endless. $35 trillion in debt right now. When uh, President uh, Bill Clinton uh, left office, there was zero debt. A Democrat, zero debt. Now, $35 trillion in debt, and she wants to do everything from uh, uh, give, uh, well, forgiveness of student loan debt, um, $25,000 for a couple wanting to buy a new home. We're broke. We're broke. And, of course, continue to uh, fund these unwinnable wars like the war in Ukraine. She wants to take away free speech. She wants to regulate Facebook, uh, X, or oh, they'll be going after Elon, um, Google, et cetera, et cetera. Truth Social, yes. Um, they say that uh, they are for democracy, that they are the guardians of democracy, but it's exactly the opposite. Just like when someone like Maxine Waters yells, racist, 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 flip it around, flip it around, see if it doesn't fit, see if it doesn't fit. So um, it's a very important election today. Um, by the way, you know, uh, Kamala has been saying uh, lately, I love Generation Z. They, they've come out to see Lady Gaga or a rapper, you know. Check out some of the rappers that have uh, been at a Kamala rally. Listen, uh, read, read, don't listen, read their lyrics <laughs> and see if they are edifying and a, a, they are uh, something that uh, is good for uh, America, good for our souls, you know. If someone does positive lyrics to rap, I have no problem with that, no problem at all. But uh, it often talks about violence, sexual violence towards women, calling oh, women every name in the book. And there's a sense of entitlement from these very rich rappers. It's ridiculous, but there is. But there is. So Brian Williams back on Prime uh, Video tonight uh, in the anchor chair. He says that there's going to be um, you know, a wide variety of I don't know what newscasters he's going to have in the field. Um, since um, networks like CNN, since they've sold out, they have lost their ratings. They've been cut in half, and they weren't that great to begin with. So, um, you know, there's plenty of uh, people available that used to work for CNN and conservative voices that they can get to if he wants it to, to, uh, to be, as uh, Fox says, fair and balanced. So we'll see what happens. I know that uh, Brian Williams is a, is a pro. He's a pro, but he's no, no friend of Donald Trump. He's no friend of Donald Trump. Um, and since um, Amazon, that owns Prime Video, is a trillion-dollar company, <laughs> they'll have no problem. They say this is, does not mean they're going to have Brian Williams on a regular basis or a regular you know, news service, like they're going to be have their own version of Fox or CNN or MSNBC, but they are, you know, testing it out. They are uh, testing it out, and they figure bringing in a legend like Brian Williams will be a, a, a good step. So I'll check that out a little bit tonight. I'll be watching Fox, and uh, if things look like they're going in favor of uh, President Trump, I definitely will want to see the look on the faces of everybody from Dana Bash uh, to Jake Tapper to the daytime anchors on CNN, um, Brian, 
Setzer is back, whatever his name is. He's he's back and uh, um, all the rest. And uh, i got to see the reaction from Rachel Maddow should this happen. But I think they're going to try to stop him from assuming the office if he should win the presidency. That's my prediction. A lot of people say this. It's not just me. Uh, they're going to say, oh, we can't have him assuming the head of a insurrection. Of course, that that's, that's bogus. He said march uh, patriotically and peacefully, peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol. He didn't say breach the Capitol. Capitol. In fact, he offered Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser 500 National Guard troops so the Capitol would be um, completely protected. And his offer of National Guard troops was, uh, was declined by um, both Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? So, and they're going to talk about uh, his indictments. We don't know what will happen on September 26 with the New York case. If Donald Trump wins the presidency, I'm pretty sure um, the New York judge will throw that out. And it won't have to be the Supreme Court that steps in. But you never know. You never know in the world of the progressives. They don't care about what their constituents wants. They want to try to, uh, you know, fool you, get in, and then do what they want to do. They're all about personal power. They're all about transforming America into something that is unrecognizable. They're not for women's rights at all. Don't let them tell you that. They took away women's rights in the locker room and your your kids' rights in the locker room. Uh, they have uh, turned uh, women's sports, teenage uh, girl sports, into uh, something that is dangerous because it's being invaded by transgender men who uh, depends on the sport. They can cause serious harm, and, and it has happened. It has happened. So um, Donald Trump, assuming the office again, will mean that America will start to gain back its sanity, its respect around the world. He will be able to work something out with Putin to get this uh, uh, Ukrainian thing over. He'll be able to work with Xi. He'll get the economy moving. He'll bring uh, pride back, uh, the, the, uh, the job market. Um, he'll have some incredible people working in his administration all people that love this country. Nikki Haley won't be one of them. Um, she gave a qualified uh, endorsement of President Trump saying um, he's not the best. <laughs> I would have been the best, she thinks. Uh, but it's so clear what she's doing. First of all, Trump hasn't spoken to her since June, so she's miffed about that. But nevertheless, she doesn't want to see uh, she loves this country. She doesn't want to see Kamala Harris as our next president. So um, she gives a uh, half-hearted endorsement saying he's not perfect, but uh, he's sure better than Kamala Harris. And this way, you know, she's laying the groundwork for her 2028 presidential run. And I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I don't think that's going to go anywhere, but she definitely... Uh, seems to be um, doing qualified uh, uh, praise of President Trump. In fact, it's not even praise. It's just saying, well, he's he's better than Kamala Harris. He he's uh, he's better for the economy. Of course, she's a she's a war hawk. She's a war hawk, uh, Nikki Haley. Uh, so um, you know, she was all wrong. For the presidency too. We cannot continue to give billions and billions of dollars to the Ukraine. We cannot uh, uh, position ourselves to, uh, to uh, create World War III when we can cool things down 
and uh, get back on track, get back on track. You can't win a war against Vladimir Putin. I've said that many times. Tucker says that uh, with his various guests and what have you. Uh, you just can't. Um, what you have to do is use diplomacy here because it never would have happened. The Ukraine war, and I don't think October 5th would have happened in Israel if uh, Donald Trump, Donald John Trump, had won a second term. So um, we're going to close the broadcast by um, saying a little prayer on this election day. Um, Obviously, God's will be done. Um, The Bible says that God will not be mocked, and he's certainly been mocked, including by Kamala Harris herself, when the two Christian boys couldn't uh, take any more of her, uh, you know, speaking of abortion like it's a sacrament, and said that uh, Jesus is Lord, Christ is King. She looked at them with that evil smile and said, oh, you're in the wrong rally. You're in the wrong rally. That sentence said all you have to know, all you have to know. And so many things that she said, avoiding interviews, only occasional friendly ones, not doing well in the friendly interviews, um, So many times she has shown that she's not well-versed on the issues at all. President Xi in China knows this. Putin knows this. They'll eat her for lunch. No, we can't let this happen to America. Also here on this daily pop-off for Election Day, 11-5-24, we have been getting a lot of email. Uh, We have some more testimonies from people that have visited Household of Faith, Bob Joyce's church, including uh, this past Sunday where a member of Cool and the Gang, who co-wrote Celebration, was there and saying, Jesus loves me. So we have uh, that to, uh, to cover. And um, a lot of people continue to analyze the facial structure and what have you. There's several new videos out on that. And... Um, Some of it is in print that makes its way onto various uh, Bob Joyce slash Elvis groups. And uh, I want to say once again that the caretaker at Graceland is not Bob Joyce. Uh, It seems like people continue to think that uh, uh, they have seen a lot of Bob Joyce at Graceland. I'm not saying he's never been there. We uh, show that uh, blurry video where it seems like Pastor Bob Joyce uh, uh, was visiting uh, and would eventually get into a black SUV, which uh, has been seen in Benton, one very similar, if not that one. And uh, it seems like uh, he was standing a number of years back out front, uh, and there were several people uh, around him and right next to him, to his left shoulder, appeared to be the late Lisa Marie Presley. God rest her soul. God rest her soul. But we speak of possibilities. I could be wrong, but there's always new stuff coming out on this uh, subject. They are uh, building the horse stable sanctuary on the nine acres of land. And uh, the seat count is way down from the first one that I heard. First, I heard four or 500 seats. I thought you'll never get that many in that horse stable. It's a beautiful horse stable uh, that they are uh, converting into a temporary sanctuary because the 125 seats at the current sanctuary just isn't enough. And even the overflow room uh, ends up being full. So... They should be able to do this pretty fast, but it doesn't seem like that is how it's going to play out at this point. There needs to be a professional crew over there, but the people that are doing it are wonderful people on a mission. They're on a mission. So, um, yeah, we'll be talking about that worldwide rambling Saturday night at 10 p.m. In terms of our series, our Homage to Rush series, we have three parts up. 
Um, if you're undecided about the issues on this election day, see part three, the top seven consequences if Trump loses, the top seven consequences if Trump loses. We use the Rush Limbaugh theme, Rush Limbaugh, the greatest of all time. It's my personal tribute to El Rushbo, admitting I don't have his talent or his knowledge but um, he's in mind as we use the Rush Limbaugh theme song for this series. But there won't be a part four if Kamala Harris wins, because what would be the point? I'll leave it to the big boys. I'll leave it to the big boys. You can't, um, you can't make, um, you can't make a pig look like a beauty contestant. You know, you can't, uh, you can't put enough lipstick on a pig. To make uh, to make that uh, pig into someone who uh, could uh, win the Miss America pageant, for example. <laughs> so there you go, our daily pop off for this uh, fifth day of November, the day we've all been waiting for. Many of us here in the United States, Election Day, twenty twenty four. I'll be watching uh, tonight and what have you. Various uh, channels, as I say, if uh, if it looks like Trump is going to take it, uh, I got to see what Rachel Maddow has to say, what uh, Tapper has to say, and all the rest, all the rest. They just don't realize that um, by compromising basic uh, principles of journalism, they created their own destruction of their reputation and thus lost a good part of their audience. They blame it on Trump where they just could have said, well, Mr. President, we don't feel what you're saying is true. This is why we don't feel it's true and and move on. But they made it a personal vendetta and we saw a side of them that, oh, maybe just uh, four or five years ago, six years ago, we never thought existed. But the same is true about Joseph R. Biden as well. Turns out he was not the Amtrak middle-class Joe that we thought he was. No, no, no. So I'm going to close in prayer. And uh, if you would like to uh, join me, you are more than welcome. Father God, we just uh, thank you and uh, give you praise that we've even made it to this Election Day 2024 that we're breathing. We thank you for uh, your blessings and protection. We ask that you uh, demonstrate your uh, will for God's people here in the United States of America not to be mocked, and most importantly for you not to be mocked, that you will do a good thing today, that you will surprise the wicked, that you will once again uh, show that Donald Trump fulfills the scripture, that you will use the foolishness of this world, which our President Trump can sometimes be, sometimes be, uh, to confound the wise, in this case, to confound the people who think they're wise, but they are really fools. We pray that uh, President Trump, if it be your will, becomes the 47th president of the United States, that you clear a path, all the uh, wicked plans that may be in place, and that you bring him and J.D. Vance, Senator Vance, to victory today because we love this country that you created for us, Lord. We love America. And may the God-fearing people be justified in their diligence today. For all sinners, Lord, we ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, all the times we have deliberately sinned, and caused uh, shame to ourselves and hurt the gospel in the process. Please wash us in your most precious blood that we never take 
for granted. And I pray, I uh, pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hmm. It's going to be a long night, Tuesday night, and probably go on for days. But I think we're going to have a good outcome. If not, you'll know for sure that we are well into the first stage of the last days. It's all predicted in the good book. All uh, we can want from President Trump is that he slows the uh, breathing, uh, the bleeding for a while, you know. That we have more glory days for America. But eventually, evil will wash across this land and the judgment of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will take place. I'm Jack Willard. Thanks for watching The Daily Pop-Off.